For this project, you'll need a white piece of paper, your colored pencil pack, and a regular pencil. Hi class, it's Mrs. Latinsky back for another art project. Today we're going to create a mountainscape, a nice chilly wintry mountainscape. Now that it's the colder weather, we're going to discuss the element of art value and the principle of design repetition. Today I want to introduce you to two artists who inspired this art project. The first one is named Jen Arani. She's an artist who lives in Maryland and she does both art with watercolor paintings but she also works as a graphic designer. The art she does she features on her Instagram account and you can even buy pieces of it. She specializes in little miniatures. It's really beautiful stuff she does. The other artist, his name's Randy Small, and he's actually from my hometown area in Whatcom County, Washington, and he does beautiful photography of the local landscapes, the farms, and especially the mountains. And I'd like to look at some of his photographs of mountains, which inspire the way that I look at mountains in our mountainscape that we'll be doing. Jen Arani has an Instagram account, which is a form of social media, where she shares a lot of the art projects she's working on. And this one's a really fun example of how she does really small pieces. This is on a little ornament made out of wood where she's done this beautiful mountainscape. Look at that sky, how it's got a shift in value from the colors. You can see it's very dark blue down to a light blue. Also, I want you to take a look at the mountain itself. So you can see how the mountain has parts that are shaded. Maybe those are parts where there's no snow, but you can see there are darker parts and whiter parts. And how she's done this is she's created areas. Do you see how there are black lines that all go in one direction to create a re repetition of the line, but it also gives a sense of shadow and shading there. And here's the other artist, Randy Small. I wanted to share some of his photography that he does on his Twitter page. This is another form of social media that he shares the photographs he does of the Whatcom County area. This particular mountain is called the Twin Sisters. And it was the view I had when I was growing up. And you can see the gorgeous sky. Maybe you can see the natural value shift that takes place in this gorgeous sunrise sky. See how it's a darker shade of red at the top, but it gets lighter and lighter as the value changes closer to the mountain. Something Grace did. This is a mountainscape she did. You can see she did a coyote up in the corner and uh, some beautiful vertical uh, beams of light shooting out like sunset lines out the top and over the mountains that frame them. What I was really impressed with was your use of trees. She has some gorgeous trees here in the foreground that she did in dark colors and even a little lake in front. Lizzie did a gorgeous mountainscape as well. Her mountains are a bit more jagged and peaked, but you'll notice that on the sides of the mountains, there's a shadow and uh, there's also trees in the foreground. She even chose to have a little stream going through it. And here's a drawing I did of a mountainscape. What I did is I chose to do something of the Twin Sisters, that mountain, that range that's in, or those mountains that are near where I grew up. You can see, and you can see several different peaks with the snowy, the snowy spots, just like Jenna Ronnie did with hers. I tried to use her style on those mountains, but I also did a, a shift in value from dark to light in the top, as well as a shift in value from dark to light as the mountains go up as well. You can see there's different foothills there and they get lighter as you get closer to the mountain and some trees in the foreground as well. Put your mountain somewhere in the middle of your page and you do this by creating a zigzag line just straight across. They can be big zigzags or little zigzags, but that's gonna be where your mountains are. Put some foothills in the foreground right before that mountain. Those are those hills that are as leading up to where the mountain is. The next step is to create these shadows in the mountain peaks that show where the snow line is. Where you wanna start is pick the top of your peak. Each of these has a peak, you pick the top, and that's where we're gonna do a start here. And we're gonna go down from the peak and focus on the left side, because the sun is gonna be up in this corner, shining down and highlighting this side. So we can see the snow on this side, but on the left side of each peak, that's where our shadow is gonna go. And we wanna go down to the valley. So from the peak to the valley, it's right here, peak, and we go down, and it can go a little wonky too, it doesn't have to be perfect, and it can go a little below the valley like that, see? Uh, 
peak. And it can be a small too. It could just be a little bit here down to the valley. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of a shadow. Or it can be a massive amount of shadow and it can be really bulbous or you can kind of swirl it up funny like that. I don't know, that look, looks a little strange. But, and this one's gonna have a little peak. So make them rough or however you wanna make them. And then you can also create some little, little areas where the snow doesn't show here if you want to, down here even. Remember in Jenna Rani's painting how she used lines to create a sense of shadow with that repetition of a line. Well, that's what we're doing here. Grab a black pencil and draw lines all in the same direction. Don't overlap them. Keep them separate, but they can be really close to each other. I have a visitor. Okay, Toby. I have a new kitten named Toby. Toby, I love you. I think it's time for you to go over here. Finish up all those shadow parts, then move on to your sky. Choose whatever color you want for your sky. Could be warm, could be cool, but make sure you press really hard at the bottom. It's going to be a very thick color and a darker value. As we go up, and you can color with your pencil like this and put your finger on top of it and hold it like this, which would kind of help you give pressure. And you do it a little lighter as you go. Now it's time for the foothills. You could choose a blue or a green or even a purple for those and start darker in the foreground and then work your way back lighter. A little behind this one, you see that? So I'm not gonna make this one as dark. The further back they go, the lighter they go. As things go in the distance, they tend to get lighter. Keep filling in those foothills with ever lighter colors as you keep going back. And then take a moment to outline each of those hills to help show the difference between them as you go. This very last hill in the back is going to be faint, almost white. And the trees in the front are going to vary in size based on how close they are. So I like doing trees in a very simple way. I draw a line. This one's going to be a relatively short one, so it's further distance. And then I do this thing where I just kind of scribble. Like that. There's my tree. Grace does a much better job on trees than I do. Let me show you hers. I don't know her technique, but hers just look better. I don't think it's because she makes them longer, taller, and thinner. I'm not sure how hers looks so much better than mine do, but she has an act for trees. Anyway, short trees are the ones in the distance. Probably gonna need quite a few of those to just fill in this space. Continue filling the space with a lot of different trees. You can do less if you want. You could fill in that bottom part green, like a pasture, brown, like a dirt field. And then you can pack them in tight on top of each other if you'd like. You also don't need to draw that initial line. You can just draw the general outline of a tree if you can scribble it without that line to guide you. Here's where you get to draw the big trees. Now, a tree that starts at the bottom of your paper and goes up taller will look like it is closer to you than one that is smaller and perhaps set further back. It's a little trick of the eye of distance. So make some tall trees in there to show that you have ones that are closer to you as well to give some more depth to your drawing. Here's the completed project. Thanks for doing art with me. I hope you enjoyed doing our mountainscape.